by Aaron Saxon Associates. Right now at five, the Jasper County Sheriff's Office hosts a community safety day. And we've got more showers and thunderstorms on the way. Some of us getting those already. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, an inaugural car and craft show organized by local students is raising money for a good cause. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Absolutely. And a good Mother's Day as well yes, yesterday. Yes, yes. Hopefully so. Yes. I made breakfast in bed for oh, the wife. Oh, did you know? Oh, lovely, Chris. I don't cook. So what'd so, you make? Well, <laughs> I thought good. it was food. <laughs> No, she liked the <laughs> eggs and uh, toast that I made. I did not make the pancakes very well. That's okay. Um, she said she was getting full from the eggs and the toast and her, the coffee thing that I made for her. But, <laughs> uh, but I, I know the pancakes were relatively terrible. So I'm sure there's That's other okay. husbands out there that probably did the same thing and probably had similar results. But it's the thought that counts. Exactly. We tried. We tried. <laughs> well, if you enjoyed the break from the rain, that's good because more is on the way. In fact, many of us all already getting some of those showers and thunderstorms this morning. Let's take a look at Skywatch Storm Tracker and that will show us exactly where those showers and storms are <clears throat> right now. Not picking up any lightning from the activity into southeast Kansas, though we have seen some out there. So as we travel into southeastern Kansas, so just outside of Independence, Parsons, Columbus, uh, getting ready to roll into Pittsburgh, Chanute, Iola, we've got showers and again some occasional thunderstorms heading down into northeastern Oklahoma. Similar situation. We've had some lightning with these, so some showers and thunderstorms. Miami, you're getting ready to get in on it. Vanita just had a shower. More on the way uh, and more rolling into Nevada, and then we're watching all of this activity and we've had a couple of severe thunderstorm mornings uh, out around the Oklahoma City area with this thunderstorm activity but you can see a little bit more lightning out there a little heavier rain as well all of this continuing to lift off to the east northeast so that's why we'll get into some shower and thunderstorm activity as we head uh, later into the morning temperatures around the area we're in the low 60s out in southeast Kansas especially where we've been seeing that rain where we haven't seen any rain yet we're a little warmer we're sitting around the mid 60s out there Kids get on the bus. We'll have more showers and thunderstorms ongoing. 62 south winds at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. And as that bus brings them home, about 70 degrees. Now, again, these are going to ultimately become scattered storms. And so some of us may be a little warmer than others. Some of us may see bigger pauses in between the storms. So you may be a little warmer than that. Southwest breeze around 5 to 10. So again, highs today, upper 60s, low 70s. And again, depending on how much of a break you get, and if you can see just a little more sunshine, you might be just a little warmer than that. Otherwise, scattered thunderstorms throughout the day today. We're going to talk more about these thunderstorms, how long they stick around, and about additional thunderstorm chances this week in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise? All right, thanks, Chris. The Jasper County Sheriff's Office held a community safety day on Saturday. The event was free of charge to the public and offered food for families as well as several activities for kids, including face painting and a bounce house. There was also a SWAT and canine demonstration. And the main takeaway is that um, as the Sheriff's Office, we're here to serve the community and uh, we enjoy the opportunity anytime that we can uh, show what it is that we do, our day-to-day -day operations, and the fact that we're just normal men and women that put on uniforms to serve the community. Uh, that's what I hope to be the main takeaway. Saturday's event was held from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Duquesne Police held a presentation Saturday for community members. The intention is to educate citizens on how they can help keep communities safe, prevent future crime, and to gain a better understanding of what the police department does and why they do it. Um, just because a lot of times when they call in, they don't, um, they don't always know like what type of information um, we're looking for. And a lot of times um, we can't be everywhere. Um, and so the community is our eyes and a lot of the um, crimes and everything that takes place. So just helping educate them um, better on either the laws and things that they can and can't do. Um, just help us out do our jobs also. The police department also offered firearm locks to those who attended. 
Cars and crafts, an unusual combination that found a place together on Saturday, looking to support students. KOEM Samantha Walker brings us more. I, I really struggled in class. I, I couldn't stay focused. I, I wasn't paying attention as much. I was arguing a lot. I got a call from my eighth grade counselor and she started telling me about this program at the high school called JAG. Christopher Judd says the Jobs for America's Graduates program, also known as JAG, through the Joplin Alternative School, changed his life, teaching him life skills he may have never learned elsewise. I thought that it was a really good opportunity for me to kind of start getting my, my stuff back together and get my stuff situated. Christopher is one of many JAG students to organize the program's inaugural car and craft show. Dozens of car enthusiasts displayed their ride with numerous local vendors selling crafts and handmade items. We're doing this so we can write, help raise money because our car show is entry by donation and our craft show people have to pay for slots and stuff and all the money is going towards for next year for our seniors to go to Washington DC. David Conrad is helping run his wife Marissa's booth, Fortress of Fashion and Frills. He says it's their first ever craft show but it's a great one to start with. Especially Jop when we understand what it is to stand together and I think everybody's trying to make a break in their life and so opportunities like this help my wife with her budding uh, craft business as well as uh, helping them with the things that they want in their life. And uh, we just love the fact that these kids are trying to make a difference in their own lives and stepping up for themselves. And the students who organize the event say the best feeling is seeing the public come out and support them. This really goes to show that you know there, there might not be people all over the place that, that want to help and when you go out in public you might not see it but there are people out there that want to help and there are people out there who are willing to spend the time and, and come out and support something. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Organizers at the Car and Craft Show say they're excited with this year's turnout and plan to make the event a yearly tradition. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOAM Morning News. The Kansas City Royals and St. Louis Cardinals take the field on Mother's Day. Plus, over 300 people have died in northern Afghanistan after flooding swept through the country. And rain chances return. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. Saxon Associates. It really does cost you nothing to see if we can help. Well, it's Selection Sunday for the Missouri Southern baseball team. The Lions currently have a 42-13 and overall record, winning their last five games. That puts Southern in a prime spot to potentially host a regional. On Saturday, Missouri Southern baseball won the MIAA Tournament Championship for the third time in program history. It's their first title in nine years. The Lions now turn their attention to the NCAA regionals. So far, Southern is off to a good start, and they have yet to lose a, post a game this past postseason. We got a lot of experience in terms of postseason. You know, we played, I think, five or six elimination games last year in some way, shape or form. So our guys have kind of been through the fire a little bit. And so uh, just stick with it. And that's a, that's our message with our with our team. We were able to do that. Just confidence wise, just everything about it. Just we're going to be closer as a team. We already were just we're going to be closer now, you know, just going to go on the regionals with a conference championship. So it's a very good feeling. Just released not long ago, here's a look at the central region as Missouri Southern will host for the second straight season in Joplin. Lions are the number two seed. Joining Southern at Warren Turner Field is the number three seed, Arkansas Tech. Arkansas Monticello is the number six seed and playing Southern in the first game is the number seven seed, Harding. Games will begin on Thursday. Times are yet to be released, but at least we know the matchups should be a lot of fun. The Kansas City Royals have won two of their last three to open their West Coast road trip in the last 28 years. This is only the sixth time the Royals have been eight games over 500 at any point in the season. Let's head out to Orange County. Royals at the Angels. Fourth inning, Freddie Furman singles to left. Salvador Perez scores and the Royals take a 1-0 lead. Later in the inning, the bases are loaded for Hunter Renfro. He's going to hit this ball hard into center field. That allows two runs to score. That's a very good sign to see his bat coming alive. Kansas City leads 3-0. 
On the mound for the Royals is Seth Lugo, who's making his eighth start of the season for the boys in blue, and he was on his game. He pitches eight strikeouts, in, uh, which is a career high. Sorry, he pitches eight complete innings and strikes out a career high 12 batters. Need a little more coffee this morning. Kansas City goes on the win game. Uh, the game four to two, now only half a game out of first place. Royals head up to Seattle tonight. Cardinals in Milwaukee taking on the Brewers. First inning, Gary Sanchez hits this to left. Run One run scores, but Reese Hoskins is out at the plate thanks to Alec Burleson. However, Brewers lead three to nothing. To the fifth inning, Cardinals are down three to one. It's about time this guy gets going. Paul Goldschmidt hits this baseball over the wall for a solo home run. Cards now trail three to two. So we're going to head to the seventh inning. Game tied up three to three. Michael Ciani drives one into the gap. The ball bounces off the wall, but somehow stays in the park. So he's out at third base. However, St. Louis takes the four to three lead. And that's all they need. Cardinals win four to three. St. Louis snaps a seven game losing streak. Well, all over Major League Baseball on Sunday, you may have noticed a large amount of pink clothes, pink bats, pink shoes. Everything is pink, and not only is it to celebrate Mother's Day, but a day for Major League Baseball to raise awareness for breast cancer. Well, still to come, the U.S. government has a new plan to pay farmers to help stop the spread of bird flu in dairy cattle. And we got another check of those thunderstorms on the way when the KOAM Morning News returns. Vice President of Nominate your Ford State Hero today. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 516 on this Monday morning. And we've got some showers and some occasional thunderstorms out there stretching through southeastern Kansas into northeast Oklahoma and another batch of showers and thunderstorms back across parts of Oklahoma. Let's start in northeastern Oklahoma, Miami. You've got a thunder shower right on your back door and back to the east, sorry, to the west. We've got more showers and thunderstorms out there stretching along the highway back toward Nawada and Bartlesville into southeastern Kansas. We've just got this line of showers and storms for right now. There's nothing behind it and nothing ahead of it at this time, but we've had some occasional lightning strikes. Don't see any on here right now, but we've had some. So Pittsburgh, you're getting ready to get on the action. Fort Scott, it's not too far from you. Parsons, Columbus, shower storms out there. And then we're keeping an eye on this activity. Now, earlier this morning, there was a severe thunderstorm warning. This is way down into Oklahoma City. So these storms have been a bit on the stronger side, but we're not anticipating any widespread severe weather. However, we're still in severe weather season. Therefore, it's, it's a remote possibility. But you can see this activity, more lightning, more organized, and a lot more heavy rain. So as it tracks on through. If you watch, you'll very quickly see various little yellow boxes flash up where again, these storms have intensified from time to time. So that said, we do have a very low end threat for some strong to low grade severe thunderstorms, primarily in our southeastern counties. So that's not to say we couldn't see a strong storm outside of this, but the better chances for a strong storm or two in the highlighted areas. So a low tornado risk, low hail and low wind. But again, it's relatively low. The overall chances of severe weather are relatively low. As we head into the afternoon, we're going to continue with scattered showers and thunderstorms out there, and these will persist with us through virtually the entire day. By 10 o'clock, you can see we we get a bit of a break, so even some partly cloudy skies with isolated showers, and we'll see some additional activity as we head toward about this time tomorrow morning. And then by noon on Tuesday, the last of the showers and any remaining thunder showers should be on their way out of here. And the rest of our Tuesday and into our Wednesday, we get a bit of an opportunity to pause once again. 64 in Joplin, south southwest breeze at three under cloudy skies. Temperatures where it's been raining, a little cooler, low 60s, and then outside of that rain shield right now, where a little closer to the mid 60s. We get our day started. It'll be scattered thunderstorms through the morning and up to about 65 by 11 o'clock. So again, once you get under the rain, temperatures will fluctuate a bit. And as you get pauses in the storms, depending on when you get them and whether or not you get some clearing, you may be a little warmer than this today. But most of us upper 60s, low 70s for those highs. Again, with scattered storms through the day, scattered storms will continue into the overnight hours as well and we will fall back eventually into the 
50s across the area. Then we've got more shower and thunderstorm chances as we head into Thursday. So by late Wednesday evening into the overnight and into our Thursday, more scattered showers and thunderstorms. And as you can see, these will continue with us through most of our Thursday. And they'll even last into Friday, more showers and thunderstorms. And right now, Friday, right along and just immediately north and south of the I-44 corridor, looks to be the better chances for some scattered showers and storms on our Friday. And then we'll start to clear out as we head into the upcoming weekend. Tomorrow, we're looking again, low 70s out there, mostly cloudy skies, mostly cloudy Wednesday, ahead of additional shower and thunderstorm chances by late Wednesday evening into the overnight. But... We're going to be a little warmer, upper 70s, back to the low 70s Thursday, thunderstorms across the area, a few scattered showers and storms on Friday. And then we head into the weekend, and look at that. It's a rare treat from Mother Nature. Our weekend looking pretty good, low to mid 80s, and we are dry ahead of more thunderstorm chances as we head into the next work week. Let's check your forecast. We're back with Health Watch right after this. For 12 years during the Freeman Joplin Memorial Run, tall banners have paid tribute to the hunt. Topping Health Watch this morning. The U.S. government has a new plan to pay farmers to help stop the spread of bird flu in dairy cattle. Over the next four months, the government will pay up to $28,000 per farm to support specific steps needed to stem the spread of H5N1. Payout incentives will also go to producers that supply personal protective equipment to their workers and those that allow workers to participate in CDC research. Additional money will go towards farms biosecurity efforts and veterinary bills for infected animals. The first bird flu infection in cows was confirmed in March by the USDA. Since then, more than 40 herds have tested positive across nine states. About one in eight adults say they have taken a GLP-1 drug like Ozempic or Manjaro. That's according to a new poll from KFF. About 6% of respondents say they are currently taking the popular drugs, and most adults say they took them to treat a chronic condition, including diabetes or heart disease, while about 40% say they took them to lose weight. Neither Ozempic nor Manjaro are approved for weight loss specifically, but doctors commonly use them off-label for weight loss. WeGoV, which contains the same key ingredient as Ozempic, was approved in 2021 for obesity. Eating ultra-processed foods is associated with early risk of death, according to a 30-year study. But researchers at Harvard report that different foods have different impacts. The study published in the BMJ Journal analyzed data from more than 100,000 health professionals. The group eating the most ultra-processed food with an average of seven servings a day had a 4% higher risk of death by any cause. That includes a 9% increased risk of neurodegenerative deaths. Meats had a bigger impact on a risk of death than cereals and whole grain breads, which contain various beneficial nutrients like fiber, vitamins and minerals. These findings are consistent with hundreds of others in the field. Researchers say they still need to see what ingredients in ultra processed foods could be the problem, whether it's food additives, emulsifiers or the flavorings involved. A dramatic rise in childhood emergency room visits could lead to a new safety changes in the melatonin industry. Demand for supplements with melatonin has skyrocketed over the last decade. The hormone is part of how bodies regulate sleep, but a March CDC report discovered that in recent years, thousands of children had been seen in emergency rooms after taking melatonin while unsupervised. Michael Yoshida explains what changes could be coming. A trade group is asking the melatonin industry to voluntarily tighten standards after a study showed a large number of childhood emergency room visits related to the substance. It's a long time coming. A March CDC report found that between 2019 and 2022, ingesting melatonin while unsupervised led to some 11,000 children being seen in emergency rooms with melatonin gummies involved in nearly 5,000 of those cases. You know, the cap is open, the child takes it because it, it's flavor, it's a flavored gummy. 
And it's it almost, you know, quite honestly, it tastes like candy. So they take it. Melatonin can help induce sleep or aid in changing someone's internal sleep clock or cycle. In recent years, demand for these supplements has skyrocketed. And along with it, children ending up in the hospital after taking melatonin while unsupervised. The thing we're most worried about, it has a central nervous system effect. It makes them, uh, makes the children so sleepy that they are hard to wake up. As a dietary supplement, melatonin does not have to go through FDA approval for safety, effectiveness, or labeling before it's sold to the public. But now, the Council for Responsible Nutrition, the leading trade association for supplements, has issued new voluntary guidelines, including new labels to warn about the dangers of drowsiness and the choking hazard for small children if not chewed properly. The Council also stresses the need for makers to adopt child safety containers. I'm Michael Yoshida reporting. And that's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOEM Morning News. And we've got a few scattered showers and thunderstorms out there as we get our Monday underway. More thunderstorm chances through the day. We'll have a look at that forecast when we come back. I'll check up. See our website for more details. Right now at 530, Christine's Vineyard in Web City holds a Mother's Day brunch. And we've got scattered showers and thunderstorms continuing to roll into the area this morning. We'll take a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. Plus, a Missouri man creates a venue to encourage sobriety and a love of music. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 530. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. Hope everyone had a great Mother's Day, Absolutely, had a great yes. weekend. Yes. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, I, I tried to make breakfast in bed for the wife. She enjoyed it. <laughs> That's the important yes. part is she she certainly enjoyed it. And hopefully all of you did as well. Yes. Not my breakfast in bed, but I mean Mother's Day in the weekend. You don't want to make you, breakfast in bed for I, those at You home wouldn't today? want me to. <laughs> there are reasons I'm not allowed to cook food, uh, but one thing I can do, yes. and one thing I'm allowed to do, is tell you about the weather. And we've got more weather settling in. Th yeah, scattered showers and thunderstorms, and apparently I'm going to need a third and fourth cup of coffee this morning. This is a look at the Skywatch Storm Tracker. We got a few isolated showers. We've had some lightning, so a little, you know, a couple of thunderstorms with this activity uh, through southeast Kansas and northeast Oklahoma. The more organized thunderstorms still off to our west. So look into southeastern Kansas, uh, Mount City just outside of Fort Scott, rolling into Pittsburgh, Parsons, Columbus right now. Scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. So we had a little further south. We got just a couple of stray showers trying to develop over Joplin, but we got a little thunder shower just on the north side of Miami around Commerce and Quapaw, Vanita, more showers and storms, Nawada, scattered showers and storms, and then this activity. Now through the morning, we've had a couple of severe thunderstorm mornings with this activity, and a strong storm or two is possible, but the good news, at least with this, is the overall severe risk is very low across the area today, but this is where the more organized showers and thunderstorms are back across northeastern Oklahoma, and these will continue to lift off to the east and northeast across the area, so we'll all get in on some additional storms out there. Where we've seen the rain in Kansas, a little cooler, low 60s, but on either side of it, and especially ahead of it, we got a few more mid 60s out there for those temperatures. Kids getting on the bus this morning, right about 62, south breeze around 5 to 10, and some scattered storms. Scattered storms this afternoon, 70 when the bus brings them home, southwest breeze at about 5 to 10. Now, depending on, since these are scattered, some of you may get some breaks, some of you may see a little more sunshine. You might be a little warmer than your neighbors, but on average, we're looking upper 60s, low 70s for our highs. I love these scattered showers and thunderstorms continue with us throughout the day. We're going to talk about how long these storms last and about our additional storm chances this week in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. Chris, thank you. Well, Christine's Vineyard in Web City held a Mother's Day brunch yesterday. The Vineyard encouraged patrons to spend Mother's Day with them. The Vineyard, which usually opens at 1 p.m. on Sunday, opened at 11 a.m. The importance of getting out and, you know, having a fun time, maybe sharing a drink with that, too. Being able to listen to some live music while also celebrating the people you love. Um, it's very fulfilling for us. We both have... Uh, families that are, are further away and we don't get to spend Mother's Day with our mothers all the time. But it's really nice to get uh, families together and to see that interaction and it's uh, heartwarming for us. 
The vineyard offered a wide selection of food and wine off their menu, as well as the presence of live music. If you've passed the North Park Mall recently, you might have seen a carnival going on. The North Park Mall welcomes the Evans United Carnival Show. Those who want to attend are met with free parking and admission. The carnival boasts plenty of activities for all ages, including rides, games and carnival food. They come and enjoy themselves and you know take their mind off other things because everybody's day to day life is different, but you know, it gives you a chance to take your mind off all that stuff. I hope everybody comes out and you know maybe relives their childhood for a little bit. The carnival ran through May 9th. The venue in St. Louis is giving people an opportunity to hear and perform music without alcohol. The garage at the intersection will host its first show on May 18th. Musician and business owner Aaron Perlett is one of those people behind it. it. It checks a lot of boxes for me in terms of it creates a safe space for people who might not want to be surrounded by alcohol when they play music. It has essentially everything you need. If you want to just walk in with your instruments and start playing, you could do that. Perla teamed up with Hope Creates to open the venue. Hope Creates is a nonprofit that helps people recover from drug and alcohol abuse. Now to look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOEM Morning News. A new report is shining a light on the expansion of clean electricity initiatives around the world. Plus, Israel orders civilian evacuations from Rafah as it expands military operations. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOEM Morning News. Topping World Watch, a new report is shining a light on the expansion of clean electricity initiatives around the world. And while researchers say there's a lot more work to be done, the uptick in people using renewable forms of energy comes at a critical time, especially when the latest data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration reveals levels of several heat trapping greenhouse gas emissions skyrocketed to historic highs last year. Chris Demia reports. When it comes to combating the effects of human-caused climate change, surges in clean energy use are sparking some hope. This according to data from London-based think tank Ember, which reveals a record-breaking 30 percent of global electricity generated last year came from renewable energy sources that don't produce greenhouse gas emissions. Researchers found hydroelectric dams produced the most clean energy last year, but cite declines in hydropower levels due to persistent droughts across North America, India, and China. Meanwhile, the report says solar power continues being the fastest growing source of electricity generation. It's been a long time coming, actually. The report found more than twice as much solar power was added around the world than coal power. I wouldn't necessarily use the word death knell to describe the coal power industry, uh, but it is in terminal decline. This revelation comes as coal-fired power plants in the U.S. are facing new regulations. Last month, the Environmental Protection Agency ruled these facilities must reduce 90 percent of their greenhouse gas emissions by 2039 or stop operating. The amount of electric power generation that we get from coal has been declining for many years. And part of the reason for that is because actually coal technology is more expensive, generally speaking, than uh, natural gas technology, which is also cleaner. And with global electricity usage in 2023 up by about 2 percent, Experts say communities must continue advancements in clean energy production to chip away at energy produced from fossil fuels. We will go through several decades of transition where we will have to make concerted efforts to rebuild our infrastructure to support electrification. A healthy touch of moral support comes to Angels of Mercy from Great Britain's Queen to mark a worldwide day of recognition. Camilla, Her Majesty the Queen, came to lift up the spirits on International Nurses Day to those who provide healing. Camilla met with staff at a London Children's Hospital, hospital rather, as well with patients and families involved with Roald Dahl's Marvelous Children's Charity, one of Camilla's favorite charities and among the 90 she supports. Camilla also greeted other nurses and paramedics. International Nursing Day is celebrated every May 12th and honors Florence Nightingale, widely considered to be the founder of modern nursing. 
Over 300 people have died and more than 1600 are injured in northern Afghanistan after flooding swept through the country. Officials say thousands of homes, vital infrastructure and health care facilities have been damaged. Residents are left with nothing as their food, shelter and belongings have been destroyed. The Taliban's economy minister urging organizations to support those affected by the floods, estimating that the hardest hit areas were home to over 300,000 children that have now, quote, lost everything. Afghanistan is one of the countries most affected by climate change, according to the UN. Well, at least seven people are dead and 17 more injured after a Russian apartment building was struck by a Ukrainian missile. Russian officials say Ukraine sent at least 12 missiles and rockets to Belarus. One of the deadliest attacks on the region so far. This video shows at least 10 floors of the building collapsing as emergency officials were looking for survivors. The roof of the building collapsed. The Russian foreign ministry says the strike was targeted on this residential building. Israel ordered as civilian evacuations from Rafah as it expands military operations, defying pressure from the United States to back off because of humanitarian concerns. Troy Yankst has the latest from the Israel-Gaza border. Nearly 220 days into the war between Israel and Hamas, Israeli forces continue to operate in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. As the Israeli Air Force targets different Hamas positions in northern Gaza, it comes as Israeli forces say they are pushing deeper into Gaza's third largest city of Rafah, where more than a million Palestinians are currently sheltering. The Israeli military says more than 300,000 people have made their way to the Mawasi humanitarian zone along the Mediterranean Sea in recent days amid ongoing evacuation orders. Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari had this to say about the situation overnight. Since the start of our precise operation against Hamas in Rafah, we have eliminated dozens of terrorists, exposed underground terror tunnels, and vast amounts of weapons. With activity continuing inside the Gaza Strip, pressure is mounting on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to cut a ceasefire deal and get the remaining hostages out of Gaza. We do know there were protests overnight in Tel Aviv, demonstrators clashing with police, calling for a new government and a hostage deal. This comes as the Biden administration continues to warn that Israeli military support will be contingent on Israeli military plans inside Gaza. That's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. This is your free at home estimate. If you want the best for less, call Windows for less. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 545 on this Monday morning. Some scattered showers out there, a couple of rumbles of thunder with some of this activity. Better thunderstorm chances, more organized thunderstorms just to the west of our area. Let's start our tour in northeastern Oklahoma. So we've got some heavier rain. Had this little guy, it was a good looking thunder shower north of Miami, kind of fizzling out a bit. More scattered showers and a couple of thunderstorms stretching back Vanita and the water, Bartlesville. Uh, this all continuing to lift off to the east northeast. In the southeastern Kansas, we got a few showers trying to form out ahead of this batch. And we've had a few showers, even a couple of thunderstorms just outside of Fort Scott now, heading into Mount City, Garnett getting in on it, just exiting the Parsons area, Columbus, Pittsburgh, showers and storms out there. And we've had this. This is a much more organized line of showers and thunderstorms out to our west. Heavier rain you can see a lot more lightning with this activity. We've had a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings with this line uh, down around the Oklahoma City area and just uh, to the southwest of Stillwater, but nothing severe with it right now. And that's some good news, at least as our overall severe threat today is very low. That's the last thing we need is more severe weather and thankfully while it's a possibility it's a very low possibility so we can take a look at all this activity sweeping through the area and we'll head down south and if you watch over the course of time there have been a series of severe thunderstorm mornings with some of this activity as it's rolled off to the east but again the good news is the overall severe threat is low but it's not zero we do have a low end risk for tornadoes hail and wind primarily in our southeastern counties just kind of barely clip in our area uh, but that's not to say we couldn't see a strong storm or two outside of that zone. But again, the overall severe risk is very low. What are we looking at today? Well, we're looking at this scattered showers, thunderstorms. They'll be with us all day today. 
through the evening overnight and looking likely into the first half of our Tuesday. So again, scattered storms. Some of you may get longer breaks in the activity. Some of you may get a little sunshine this afternoon, so some of you may be a little warmer than the rest of us, but otherwise scattered showers and storms are a little bit of a lull between say 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. as we head toward tomorrow morning. More showers and thunderstorms out there, and then by about the noon hour, the last of that activity is on its way out of here. Our camera 7th and range line, it is cloudy and trying to make a determination with some of those isolated showers. The roads look like they may be just a little wet because you know some of the rain we see on radar is Virga. It's rain that's in the upper atmosphere but not necessarily reaching the ground but the roads do look a little bit on the damp side 64 in Joplin temperatures around the area we've got low 60s into parts of southeastern Kansas out ahead of where some of the heavier rain is we've got some mid even upper 60s out there as we get our morning underway scattered showers and thunderstorms that'll be the trend all through the morning hours and again as we showed you on the future check through the rest of today we're going to fall back or rise up rather into about the mid 60s. So again, depending on when you're getting the rain and how much rain you get, temperatures may fluctuate a bit here and there. Highs today, upper 60s, low 70s, scattered showers and thunderstorms continuing for us. And we'll have a southwest breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Again, some pauses in the activity through the evening, and we'll see a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms as we go overnight, falling back into the upper 50s and low 60s. By late Wednesday into Thursday, more showers and thunderstorms across the area. Better storm chances on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, well, Wednesday night into Thursday, and then we'll have some scattered showers and thunderstorms with us on our Friday as well. Those will be with us all day, and then they will eventually begin to clear out as we head into the weekend. Low 70s tomorrow, upper 70s Wednesday as we spend most of the day dry. More storms Wednesday night into Thursday, but the weekend getting a nice break. Clearing out, not bad. Low to mid 80s out there. More storm chances as we head into the next work week. That's a check of your forecast. We're back with more right after this. A night for humanity Friday Tracker is here for you. Well, NASA wants to boldly take viewers where no one has gone before. They've used cutting edge supercomputer tech to create a virtual journey to the center of a black hole. Jeremy Roth has today's take a look at this. Like something out of a science fiction adventure, NASA is inviting you to take a trippy trip to the center of a black hole, or at least what NASA believes a trip to the center of a black hole would look like. Using a powerful supercomputer, the agency has created an immersive visualization that plunges the viewer headfirst into one of our galaxy's greatest mysteries. The simulation envisions a black hole roughly 4.3 million times the mass of the sun, similar to the monstrous black hole at the center of our own galaxy. The visualization first orbits the light-bending event horizon, slingshotting the viewer around and back out again, and then plunges straight into the singularity past the point of no return. Since this image captured in 2019 is the actual closest we have come to viewing a real black hole, for now this high-def, high-flying simulation will serve well as a safe alternative. Always trying to top themselves when it comes to trippy visuals, astronomers have dropped another deep space doozy, this stunning look at a sprawling nebula boldly named God's Hand. In the image, an outstretched cometary globule named CG4 resembles a ghostly hand reaching out for a spiraled galaxy. A deeper examination reveals the hand actually contains two young stellar objects, or stars, in their early stages of evolution. The incredible image is the work of a Chile-based telescopic device called the Dark Energy Camera, which sounds like something Thanos would take with him on vacation. Anywho, you gotta hand it to these astronomers for their handy work. This God's Hand image is another interstellar work of art. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Pretty incredible. We'll stick around. We'll be right back. RockAuto.com. Yes, yes. The Lunch Weather Team. Here for you every time. A school bus driver in Florida is on a mission to share more than just rides with students. Meet Anthony Burgess, who has driven elementary and high school students for Pinellas County Schools since September of 2023. Burgess says he wanted to make the bus rides exciting and a more positive place for the students and himself. And that's when he started to decorate his bus with colorful, inspirational quotes. 
All throughout the bus, students can read quotes from prominent figures like Walt Disney and even Mother Teresa. But some of the students' favorite quotes are the ones that come from Burgess. When a nature gets into a fight with Earth, sometimes a nice apology comes with it with a beautiful light touch. The forces of strong solar storms hitting the planet Friday said I'm sorry by leaving behind gentle northern lights in places like quiet Markville, Minnesota and other U.S. states late Friday night where viewers could hear chirping nature sounds and crunchy sticks in the woods while being bathed in gentle greens, pinks, blues and mixed hues. The storm could also allow the lights to be seen across the country Saturday and other nights as well. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says the lights may dip as low as Florida, Southern Texas and Southern California. Yeah, a number of folks here in the four states uh, caught video and pictures of the northern lights down through our area as well this past weekend before the clouds started rolling in last night. Certainly an impressive sight for anybody who managed to go out there and actually see it uh, as it happened because it's very rare for us to see something like that this far south. Unfortunately, if there were any northern lights ongoing this morning, there's not. But if there were, you wouldn't be able to see anything. We're going to have scattered showers and thunderstorms as we get our morning underway. Temperatures fluctuating under the rain and about 65 by 11 o'clock this morning. Highs on today on the average upper 60s, low 70s, as these are going to be scattered storms. Some of you may get a little more sunshine here and there, may get a little warmer. But again, on the average, about the upper 60s, low 70s, scattered showers and storms through the day. And we'll have a southwest breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour. Could see a strong storm or two, but the good news is the overall severe threat for today is very low, which that's the last thing we need is more severe weather. Scattered showers and thunder storms through the evening and overnight hours will eventually make it back into the upper 50s and low 60s and we've got more shower and thunderstorm chances as we head later into the week. So heading into our Tuesday, the, big, the first half of our day, and we're looking at more scattered showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. They'll clear out by about noon, making the uh, low 70s. Wednesday, we're going to spend most of the day dry, partly to mostly cloudy skies, be a little warmer upper 70s and by late Wednesday evening and overnight, more showers and thunderstorms roll in. They'll stick with us through the entire higher day on Thursday and for a good portion of our Friday got a great weekend ahead of us low 80s and dry more thunderstorm chances next week. Let's check your forecast. We've got more of the KOM morning news right after this.